People in Fort Pierce are mourning the deaths of five young people killed in a fiery crash Friday night. Detectives say the five friends were all in the same car when another driver rear-ended their vehicle at the intersection of 25th Street and Midway Road. The victims had no chance. I've never intended to hurt anyone in my life. I regret the poor decisions I've made and I'm sorry to all the families that I have devastated because of this terrible accident. My name is Elena. I miss my mom and my dad. I feel sad when the accident happened. They're trying to get somebody out of the car. It's a horrible wreck, so please I'm hurry. Fine. In a world where one single decision can change everything, we will delve into the heartbreaking accounts of those affected by these senseless accidents caused by drunk drivers. Lives forever altered, families torn apart, and communities left in shock. What happens when these drunk drivers are confronted with the consequences of their reckless actions? Will they seek forgiveness or will they resist and remain unapologetic in the face of justice? In this video, we are going to uncover the stories of four drunk drivers whose irresponsible actions took the lives of many innocent people. It was November 23, 2018, when 21 year old Tanner Doshner made a terrible decision to drive while he was impaired. He was going at a staggering 97 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone. With this speed, he could not slow down his SUV and ran a red light that resulted in a crash into the back of a Dodge Dakota. The impact was devastating. The Dodge crashed into another car, a BMW, and things got even worse. The gas tank of the Dodge was damaged and it caught on fire. Can you imagine how terrifying that must have been for everyone involved? Flames engulfed the car, people were trapped, and lives were hanging in the balance. Tragically, five people, 27-year-old Kendon Tillett, driver of the Dodge Dakota, Alexis Cheney, Anthony Victor, Anthony Martin, only 16, and Darian Douglas from Port St. Lucie lost their lives in that fiery crash. Tonight, people in Fort Pierce are mourning the deaths of five young people killed in a fiery crash Friday night. Detectives say the five friends were all in the same car when another driver rear-ended their vehicle at the intersection of 25th Street and Midway Road. The victims had no chance. The vehicle burst into flames on impact, killing all five people inside. Tears streamed down the faces of the victim's family members as they expressed their profound grief and sorrow. The pain was immeasurable and they sought justice for their lost loved ones. But wait, there's a glimmer of hope in this tragedy. A brave girl named Ariana Stanberry, just 14 years old at the time, miraculously survived. A courageous bystander pulled her out of the burning truck. But can you even begin to imagine the trauma she must have suffered? I had to watch my friend die. And I look back to the back seat and I just saw a bunch of fire. Now here's the truly shocking part. Police say Dashner was driving almost 100 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone when he slammed into the Dakota and his blood alcohol level was three times the legal limit. Pictures show investigators removing two bottles of liquor from his Yukon and Dashner being swabbed for DNA. The investigation finally led to Dashner's arrest after 25 days of the crash. The man accused of driving drunk and killing five people in a fiery crash in Fort Pierce has been arrested exactly 25 days after the crash. As soon as the trial began, the courtroom was a somber setting, filled with tears and broken hearts. The raw emotions of the victim's family members were captured on camera as they faced the person responsible for their loss. Dashner's father pleaded with the families to forgive his son and himself for this tragedy. Tanner Dashner himself read a heartfelt letter he had written to the families of those he unintentionally harmed. His words were laden with guilt and sorrow, seeking forgiveness. I've never intended to hurt anyone in my life. I regret the poor decisions I've made and I'm sorry to all the families that I have devastated because of this terrible accident. I hope that you will receive some closure today and that one day that you can forgive me. Tanner's defense attorney argued that his client was suffering from a traumatic brain injury, which led him to do what he did. But the judge didn't buy it. He rightly pointed out that there was no evidence to support that claim. Apparently on the night of the crash, Tanner posted a selfie on Snapchat, which he captioned, 
sloshed. So clearly Tanner knew he was drunk and in no state to drive, yet he did. Considering each of the five DUI manslaughter charges, Judge Robert Makemson sentenced Tanner Dashner to more than 70 years behind bars. As the judge pronounced the sentence, a heavy silence filled the courtroom. Dashner's face displayed a mixture of shock, disbelief, and remorse. The weight of the consequences finally seemed to sink in, and the reality of spending more than seven decades behind bars was now his fate. Dashner had hoped for a lighter sentence, a chance at redemption, but it seemed that the magnitude of his actions demanded a severe punishment. Speaking during the sentencing, Judge Makemson further said he usually does not give explanations for his sentences, but this was an exceptional case a case of bad decisions and the consequences of those decisions. As the victim's families stepped out of the courtroom, emotions were still raw. Through tearful eyes, they shared thoughts on the sentence and their journey toward healing. The pain they experienced was immeasurable, but their resilience was equally powerful. Leslie Douglas, father to one of the victims, Darian Douglas, expressed that he still had problems sleeping at night, as losing a son is one of the greatest fears, a fear he is currently living with. Bianne Victor, mother of Anthony Victor, with mixed expressions said, It is what it is, but I feel so sorry for the family. And that's me. Because I'm a mom. I know how they feel. And I know they hurt. But. She was torn between her grief and understanding that Dashner's family was also suffering. Shamika Baker, mother of Alexis Cheney, was much relieved with the decision of the judge. She said, I've been waiting three months, three years and seven years, three years, seven months for this day to come. Ariona Stanberry, now 18, the sole survivor of that tragic night, bravely faced the cameras, expressed her belief that justice was served. Happy that he's in jail and I hope he's staying there forever. The impact of that tragic night will be felt for years to come. Families will forever cherish the memories of their loved ones, and the community will remember the lives lost far too soon. The second story is about a 47-year-old man, Todd Grud Zanask, who has gotten himself into some really big problems. He is an addict and confesses to the claims that he finds it difficult to stay a moment without alcohol. But what exactly has brought him to this moment? Let's go back to where it all began. It is September 30th, 2018. Todd had just woken up in the morning. He put on his Packers jersey and stepped out to a bar. Upon getting there, he sat down with his eyes on the television screen, watching the football match. Todd felt empty and to enjoy the football game, he ordered a few bottles of rich alcoholic drinks. He was not new to drinking, so in less than an hour, Todd gulps down all the drinks he ordered, got himself into his truck, and drove out. But he wasn't done yet. After a few miles, he stopped the truck just in front of another liquor store and got some more drinks. At about 12.39 p.m., Todd had left the third bar, and at that point, he had already consumed no less than 16 bottles of strong alcoholic drinks. I think it'll be reasonable to conclude that Todd should have been dizzy and struggling to gain balance at this point. Well, this leaves me wondering if there was no security, barmen, or some other persons who could have called the attention of the local police. Sadly, nothing like this was done, and an innocent young lady would end up paying the ultimate price for something she knew nothing about. On the very same morning of September 30th, 2018, the victim, 25-year-old Angela Wimmer, got into her new Mazda car and plied the Cape Lane on her way home from church. She stopped at a red light and was getting ready to move when suddenly she was hit by Todd's truck going 60 miles per hour. The crash sent the Mazda into a 44-mile slide, crashing into three other vehicles in the process. At the scene, some of the people who witnessed the crash called 911 immediately to save young Angela's life. They're trying to get somebody out of the car. It's a horrible wreck, so please hurry. You need to send EMS here immediately. And so, before the emergency services arrived, a lot was already done to help Angela. Later, she was rushed to the hospital for brain surgery, but sadly, just after a few hours, she was confirmed dead. Her family was completely devastated when they heard the news. Around Memphis, Texas, when we got we got the call that there'd been an accident and she was she was in critical. They said the the policemen said that uh, she had been in a car accident, and um, 
that she was in in surgery and she was having brain surgery and he said that um, that she had passed away back at the accident scene todd was seen trying to pull back the car it was obvious he was trying to get away from the mess he had created. Thankfully, this did not work out. He was taken to the hospital where his blood alcohol level was found to be four times the legal limit. While at the hospital, Todd would learn about the devastating effects of his actions. He was charged with 15 separate counts, including first degree murder. It was revealed that Todd had been arrested several times before for DUI, two times in 2000 and one time in 2001, two times in 2003 and one time in 2007. This leaves me wondering how he was let off the hook so easily in each of his previous DUI arrests. Maybe if a judge had slammed a severe punishment on him, this accident would have been avoided. Six recorded DUIs and still, Todd had not learned to be more responsible. As it stands now, this is recorded as the seventh time his addiction hit him hard on the head. Todd has gotten himself into so much that he weeps bitterly for causing another untimely death. I've struggled with alcoholism my whole life. It was never, ever my intent to get up that morning and hurt anyone. After several court sessions, the judge finally sentences him to life imprisonment. But just before then, Todd has been granted a chance to say a few words in the courtroom. I do not feel that I am a victim. The victim has passed away because of my ignorance. And I am so truly sorry to the family, to everybody else affected, to Miss Martinez. And I am so sorry for how much I'm hurting you. And I hope you heal fast in every way. From those words and bodily expressions posed by Todd, one could say it's obvious that he regrets the pain he has caused the family and friends. On the evening of December 8th, 2020, Grace Coleman, after an evening of heavy drinking, made the devastating decision to get behind the wheel of her Range Rover and drive off. Grace Coleman's impaired judgment led to her running a red light at the intersection of Pelican Hill Road South and Newport Coast Drive, plowing her vehicle into the unsuspecting family's car as they made a left turn on a green light. The impact was horrific. The driver in the other car, Henry Saldana Magia, and his wife, Gabriela Andrade, lost their lives, while their three young daughters had severe injuries. The eldest daughter, five-year-old Emma, had sustained two broken legs and a broken arm, while her younger sister, Elena, who was four at the time, hit her head and broke an arm. Also, Samantha, the youngest daughter, who was just about a year and a half, sustained a broken ankle. The young girls were resuscitated and taken to the hospital where they luckily survived. According to family members, Henry had planned to spend quality time with his family after being locked up during the COVID-19 pandemic, and he had made arrangements for them to go out and have fun together. He wanted to take them for a car, I mean, just for a car ride, at least, just to go out and see I mean, for sure, that was it. That's why they went out. During the investigation, it was revealed that Grace Coleman had a blood alcohol content of 0.22% at the time of the crash, nearly three times the legal limit. Can you believe that? When someone cannot even walk with this amount of alcohol in their body, Coleman was driving. But it was not the first time she was driving drunk. Apparently, she had been arrested twice before for doing this, once in 2019 and the other just about four months before this. Grace was charged with a double murder a hit and run, and also driving with a raised blood alcohol level. Burdened with guilt and remorse, stood before the court and pleaded guilty of all the charges. During the sentencing hearing, the prosecution urged the court to consider the severity of the crime and the lasting impact on the victim's loved ones. The family members of the victims shared their heartbreaking impact statements in the courtroom. Those beautiful girls will never have their parents from their major moments of their lives. Who is going to walk them down the aisle if they ever get married? Who is going to dance with them at their quinceañera? Andrade's mother, with her heart still shattered, spoke through a translator. December 9th, 2020, I received a phone call to give me the saddest news. It was the worst thing that I could have heard a pain that I will never be able to overcome. Two of the couple's daughters, Emma and Elena, now seven and five, expressed their profound sadness through heartfelt letters and drawings. My name is Emma, Sophia. I write this letter because I miss my mom. My name is Elena. 
I miss my mom and my dad. I feel sad when the accident happened. Even Grace Coleman could not hold back her tears as the impact of her actions weighed heavily upon her. She listened as the victim's family expressed their pain and loss, leaving an incredible mark on her conscience. Everyone would expect this to be a good opportunity for Coleman to attempt to make right her wrongs by at least apologizing and also taking responsibility for the damage she had caused to this family. But no, she was not seen doing any of these other than just sobbing as the families all expressed their pain and loss. Well, maybe that was her way of showing how affected she was, I think. As the judge prepared to deliver the sentence, emotions ran high. Judge Greg L. Prickett addressed the victim's families, encouraging them to remember the good in their lives of their loved ones and find strength in moving forward. I sense strongly that they would want you to continue to live your lives with joy. To appreciate every day. To raise those precious girls. Grace was sentenced to 21 years to life in prison. The judge fought back tears knowing that no sentence could truly ever heal the pain caused by this tragic event. Outside the court, Diana Salanda, a sister of one of the victims, shared her raw emotions with the media, urging others to recognize the devastating consequences of drunk driving. It's very painful because they're not here to be with us to celebrate those milestones. It's very heartbreaking and I just want to give a message to people, be responsible, don't drink and drive. Myra Thibault Rios, the mother of Gabriela Andrade, also spoke while holding her three granddaughters tight during a news conference following the sentencing. She says the girls are the ones most affected. They're the ones that suffer, that cry, that ask for mom and dad. What are we going to say when they ask where their parents are? They're the ones who ask. Grace Coleman's sentencing to 21 years to life in prison might have brought the case to a close, but it can never fully heal the wounds inflicted on the affected families, especially for the little kids. Their lives will never be the same. Now let's dig into the last story that takes us to Santa Maria. On the night of March 16, 2019, 28-year-old Javier Cortez left a house party after consuming about three to four bottles of beer and a tequila jello shot. The host of the party had offered Javier and the other attendees the chance to spend the night at his house, but Javier, who already appeared drunk, refused. In a series of bad choices, Javier decided to drive home, and he did so successfully, but then the heavily drunk Javier decided to once again leave his house to follow his girlfriend, and this resulted in a fatal accident. He slammed his black Chrysler sedan straight into a white Cherokee containing four passengers, killing two of them and seriously injuring the others. The police and emergency responders arrived at the scene to find a horrific sight. The impact of the collision was so severe that the force ejected two of the passengers named Olivio and Monica Gonzalez from the vehicle, even though they were both wearing seatbelts. Tragically, 21-year-old Monica Gonzalez was confirmed to have lost her life on the spot. Meanwhile, 17-year-old Madison Coleman, the driver of the vehicle, was found pinned inside the Jeep due to the sheer force of the collision. The firefighters bravely fought against the engulfing flames to extricate her from the wreckage, but despite their heroic efforts, she was later pronounced dead. Amidst the chaos and grief, there were rays of hope. Two of the victims of the accident and passengers of the vehicle, Everhart and Olivio, were rescued from the scene. Everhart received urgent medical attention at the Marion Regional Medical Center, while Olivio's injuries required more specialized care, leading her to be flown to Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital. Miraculously, they both survived the harrowing ordeal. According to friends, Madison Coleman and Monica Gonzalez worked in the food service industry. Gonzalez was working at McDonald's and Coleman was working at Taco Bell. In an interview, Gonzalez's shift manager, Kevin, said, She was just a leader. She, she really, like, she'd get all the crew members together and get them doing what they needed to do if the managers had to deal with something. But there's never going to be those moments anymore, you know, laughing or, you know, I, I need this done. And, She's right there to do it for you. It's just 
it's gonna be a pretty big loss, not just for the business, but for everyone else here. Coleman's grandmother, Susie Van Benthuizen, on a phone call with the news channel said, She was a sweet girl, she had a job, she always went to her work. She was super nice, she didn't have a mean bone in her body, like she loved everybody. She wanted to be everybody's friend, and she loved to sing. Her voice was so beautiful. Now, here is what happened to Javier after the accident. Javier was tested and found to be having a blood alcohol content of 0.17%, more than twice the legal limit of 0.8%. To make it even worse, he ran a red light, traveling at 104 miles per hour. Authorities revealed that Javier had an odor of alcohol and was slurring his words when he was interviewed. It's unclear exactly when his trial began. However, during the trial, Deputy District Attorney Stephen Wagner told the judge that Javier showed a complete disregard for public safety, demonstrating complete insensitivity. He also pointed out that Javier had so many opportunities to abort his decision. Stephen Wagner recalls that the host of the party announced to all of his guests that they had a place to stay that night. Javier could have also changed his mind when he managed to get home, but he did not. A year before the accident, Javier Cortez was part of a DUI investigation where he signed as a responsible party and was asked to take custody of his cousin who was involved in a DUI incident. His cousin had been arrested for impaired driving. Stephen Wagner referred to this incident several times during the trial. He was convinced that it proved Javier knew the dangers of driving while intoxicated, and Wagner further went on to tell the court that while it was clear that Javier did not intentionally kill the victims, we cannot consider his conduct to be an accident. He insisted that the defendant's decisions and actions were intentional. His action to drive at a speed over 90 miles per hour and to run the red light were all intentional. Javier initially denied all special allegations, pleading not guilty, but as the trial progressed over the years, he changed his stand. The defense attorney admitted that his client made horrible choices, resulting in horrible damage. He told the court that Javier was prepared to undergo a very substantial punishment, admitting to his wrongfulness of his conduct. In November 2022, three years after the incident, Javier Cortez was finally sentenced to 21 years to life in prison for the second degree murder and DUI felony, with a special allegation of causing great bodily injury. Judge John McGregor, in his address, stated that he often indicates the difference between driving under the influence of alcohol and driving under the influence of drugs when passing sentencing for drunk driving cases that involve misbehaving persons. Deputy District Attorney Stephen Wagner said that Javier's eventual guilty plea was merely a step toward healing for the families, whose lives had forever been tragically altered by the incident. Olivia, one of the survivors of the crash, gave an impactful statement. She wrote that after under going more than 10 surgeries, her life is not the same anymore. She feels like her life no longer makes sense, like she is useless. As a result of the brain injuries, Olivia experiences confusion and relies on a wheelchair, struggling with regular hip and back pain. She also said that she lost two of her best friends, whom she considered to be her sisters. Maria Marcias, mother to Monica Gonzalez, one of the victims, in an emotional statement said that Javier Cortez does not deserve freedom since he took from her the most precious thing in her life. Madison Coleman's mother told Javier that his actions have changed the lives of many families, including his own. While Javier eventually faced the consequences of his actions with a lengthy prison sentence, the pain and loss endured by the victim's families can never, never truly, truly be compensated. compensated. What do you make of this video? Do you think that justice has been served in all four cases? Out of all four cases, which one was the most heartbreaking for you? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, like and share the video with your loved ones to spread awareness and the horrific reality of drunk driving.